The following video is for educational purposes only. Please use this information with discretion. Our intent is to help you become a more informed healthcare consumer. Ortho University presents Carpal Tunnel Syndrome by Dr. David Eisenhower. And now it's time to ortho you. Hello, I'm Dr. David Eisenhower. I'm a board certified and dual fellowship trained orthopedic surgeon specializing in surgery of the shoulder, elbow, and hand. On this video, we're going to discuss carpal tunnel syndrome, what it is, how to diagnose it, and how to treat it. We're going to give you some simple home diagnostic tools as well as some simple home remedies which may help save that initial doctor's visit. So what is carpal tunnel syndrome? Carpal tunnel syndrome is compression of the median nerve at the wrist. The median nerve, like all nerves, originates in the spinal cord. It travels down the arm and it crosses the wrist through the carpal tunnel into the hand. The carpal tunnel is a very tight tunnel composed of bone on three sides and a ligament across the top called the transverse carpal ligament. Within that tunnel lives all the tendons that bend the fingers as well as the median nerve. The median nerve gives feeling to the thumb, index finger, middle finger, and the thumb side of the ring finger, as well as this entire part of the hand and the very tips of the fingers and the thumb. When this nerve gets squeezed within the tunnel, and that can occur due to inflammation or swelling around the tunnel or a tendonitis, or sometimes the nerve itself is swollen. That nerve gets pushed up against the roof of the tunnel and eventually it starts falling asleep. Uh, it's kind of like sitting cross-legged for too long, your foot starts falling asleep, and that's only from minutes of pressure on uh, the nerve. With carpal tunnel syndrome, typically this is something that develops over the course of weeks to months or sometimes even years. So patients will present with a broad spectrum of symptoms, but most commonly they'll have numbness into this part of the hand or any combination thereof. Sometimes it's just two fingers or sometimes it's just the thumb. Oftentimes they'll also have pain with this. At first the symptoms are intermittent, so they'll come and go. They'll have some pain and numbness uh, that is not constant, but as the disease progresses, that progresses to constant numbness and tingling. And sometimes the pain actually gets better as the disease progresses and the nerve uh, becomes permanently damaged, sometimes the, the pain actually does improve, although the patients will have some permanent numbness. Sometimes patients also will have weakness of the, the thumb muscle, so weakness with gripping and grasping. Patients will uh, oftentimes complain of feelings of swelling in the hand or fatness of the fingers, and very, very commonly uh, they'll complain of nighttime symptoms. So patients will tell me that they have to shake the hand at nighttime to get it to wake up, or they have to hang their arm over the side of the bed uh, to get the fingers to wake up. Uh, sometimes the symptoms occur while driving or while reading or talking on a phone or curling hair. Uh, anything that puts the wrist in an awkward position can increase the symptoms. At nighttime, the symptoms tend to be uh, more significant because we tend to sleep in this position because these muscles are stronger than these muscles and it tends to pull the wrist down and put pressure on the nerve at nighttime, which makes the nerve more irritable even throughout the daytime. Um, so some Simple diagnostic tools for patients to help determine if this is carpal tunnel syndrome or tendonitis or arthritis or what it is that's causing your hand pain uh, would be a Phelan's test. Um, this is uh, probably one of the oldest and most commonly performed tests where patients bend their wrist into this position and hold it for about a minute. This kinks the nerve at the carpal tunnel. It puts extra pressure on the nerve and it causes the fingers to fall asleep, typically in patients who have carpal tunnel syndrome. You can also do the reverse Phelan's test, which kinks the nerve in the opposite direction. Hold this for about a minute. Something that I do in the office is called a Tennell's test. So we'll tap over the nerve at the carpal tunnel, which is just beyond the wrist flexion crease. So tap right over the carpal tunnel and sometimes go a little bit more up the forearm as well that usually will elicit an electric shock that radiates into the fingertips if the nerve is irritated. 
Um, it's not normal to have that shocky feeling radiate into the fingertips in a normal nerve uh, in a normal hand that does not have carpal tunnel syndrome. The most sensitive test that I do in my office is something called a Durkin's compression test and you can do this at home on your own. So take your thumb and hold over the carpal tunnel right here and then I also bring a little bit of flexion into the wrist and I hold this for about 60 seconds. In patients who have carpal tunnel syndrome this usually will elicit numbness or tingling or pain or some combination thereof. When patients come see me in the clinic, um, we get x-rays and make sure that there's no bony pathology or, or bony reason uh, to have carpal tunnel syndrome. Very rarely, but occasionally, we'll see something uh, on x-ray that may be pushing on the nerve. And occasionally, uh, carpal tunnel syndrome can occur acutely, such as with a wrist fracture. If there's a fragment of bone pushing on the nerve, patients may have um, sudden onset of, of numbness in the fingertips. Uh, also in the uh, clinic setting, if I have patients who have some mixed symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome or maybe something called cubital tunnel syndrome, uh, which is compression of the ulnar nerve at the elbow that gives feeling to this part of the hand, or occasionally compressions of the nerve up in the neck uh, actually will present with symptoms in the hand, even though the nerves are being squeezed by bone spurs or, or discs up in the neck. Uh, so we evaluate the, the neck in the clinic uh, as well, and occasionally we get neck x-rays. But very often, I will send patients out for what's called an EMG or nerve conduction study. This is a nerve study that checks the flow of electricity from the neck down to the fingertips. That can help confirm a diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome, and it tells me if this is mild, moderate, or severe, and that really helps dictate and guide treatment. Um, as far as home treatment recommendations, um, something that I do in the office is I give my patients a nighttime splint, a carpal tunnel splint. You can buy this over the counter at Walgreens or CVS or online and you wear this at nighttime and it just keeps you from falling into this position when you sleep. It takes the pressure off the nerve and it tends to help with the nighttime symptoms and the daytime symptoms. Sometimes massage over that area can be helpful. Sometimes carpal tunnel stretching exercises can be helpful where you'll put your hand down on a hard surface, put firm pressure into it and spread the fingers out and hold that and spread the fingers out again and hold that for about 30 or 45 seconds. That can maybe stretch the carpal tunnel and, and be a little bit helpful. We pause now with two minutes left in the video and ask that you open a separate browser screen and go to moonlightortho.com where you can quickly register for a free patient account and get immediate access to the final portion of this video, including home treatments and remedies, along with any additional treatments that may be prescribed or recommended in office or via telemedicine, including when it may be time to consider surgery. This also gives you full access to the entire OrthoU video library, highlighting all of the most common orthopedic conditions. Once registered on Moonlight Ortho, Patients will have an all-inclusive orthopedic telehealth hub at their fingertips and can pay to be seen by a board-certified and fellowship-trained orthopedic surgeon. Moonlight Ortho is the first and only orthopedic-specific telemedicine practice where patients can be seen online by a board-certified orthopedic surgeon. Via telemedicine, patients can receive x-ray, MRI, lab, and physical therapy orders, along with prescription medications all within 24 to 36 hours from your time of visit. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video and appreciate the free advice that our surgeons have offered you, please rate and subscribe.